What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm bringing you guys another cooking video. So for today's video, I have a little big co-star. Yes. So if you guys are familiar with the family, you guys know this is my little big nephew, Ruben. Hi guys. So Ruben actually also has a channel with his girl, Karen. So I'll make sure to put his info in the description box. Mm -hmm. um, if you guys want to follow him on Instagram and on his channel with his girl. Check this out, Ruin K Vlogs. Instagram, Root Boy, but like she said, she'll make sure to uh, link it. Yes, I'll make sure to put his info in the description box. I wanted to do a collab with another one of my nephews. The men in my family, they basically all kind of cook. Ruben actually made this for the family and everyone loved it, so I thought it would be a good Fine. idea. All right, Ruben, so what are we going to be making today? We're going to be making Philly cheesesteaks. And I swear to you guys, these are fire. You guys are going to love them. You guys need to try it. Ruben, I actually never made this before, so Ruben is going to actually teach all of us how to make it. Come along with us, and I'm going to show you guys how to make it. All right, guys, so let me show you guys what we're going to need. So for the meat choice, um, I got top sirloin. Um, but the best when I heard is ribeye, so you guys can get ribeye instead, um, but I'm using the top sirloin. You're going to need yellow onion. You're going to need red bell peppers. You're going to need green bell peppers, provolone, Worcester sauce. I think that's how you say it, but you guys get it. So I was supposed to get garlic paste, but they didn't have none, so I just got minced garlic. Ketchup, mayo, Mushrooms also, I believe you're supposed to use the hoagie rolls, but honestly you guys I try to order from three Freaking stores and all three stores didn't have hoagie rolls, so I had to get the French So if you guys can get hoagies get that but I'm using the French You're going to need onion powder and seasoning salt of your choice. I use Lori's. All right chef So what are we doing first? So first we are going to wash them. Okay, yeah I already washed mine, so. All right, and then after we do this, we're gonna um, we're gonna start cutting up the meat. Okay, cool. We're gonna have to we we have to thin slice it, so. Okay. I remember when I first started my channel, people would be like, "Oh my god, you just handled the meat, and now you're handling the veggies," but it's just like I didn't post myself washing my hands like i did wash my hands like i would wash my hands but i just wouldn't add that part on the video uh, so people would be like you didn't even wash your hands but i just feel like i shouldn't have to show every move because i just want to get to the point i just feel like it's common sense you know to wash your hands yeah because then you want people to enjoy the video you don't want people skipping through yeah it. i don't want to add like every little part and now people get it because i'm like i'm not going to add every little part but obviously yeah. i do that but i just thought that was funny that you showed yourself washing all right let me show you guys what ruben is doing right now okay so he said so basically he's taking off the fat yeah i'm taking off the fat and then what we're gonna do is we're pretty much gonna thin slice so we want we want it we want it thin right and okay. if you guys want to get it like like perfectly thin put it in the freezer for about like 30 40 minutes and then um take it out and start cutting it and it should cut like very easy so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start just thin slicing it like that. That, that way, knife kind of sucks, yeah, huh? Yeah, we should probably get a different knife. Yeah, we're gonna re regroup. So we found a little better knife, guys, but basically you're going to cut the steak in thin slices. Mm-hmm, like this. Okay. Just like that. Well, this is actually not bad to cut. No? Like, if you cut it, like, at an angle, I feel like it's, it's easier. easier. Yeah. Or what do you think? That's the only thing I don't like about dealing with me is, like, having to cut it. It's hard, huh? I feel like... And I always, like, I don't know why, but sometimes I always watch cooking videos. And they always say, go against, like, the grain or whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, the, the thread of the meat. And I, I don't feel like I could ever pay attention to something like that, you know? I just could You know what? I feel like I I learned by doing it. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes Papa will try to give me advice like on cooking and I'm just like, don't even tell me because I'm going to forget. <laughs> like, 
Just show me. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You're more of like a um, like hands-on type of learner, you know? Yeah. So where'd you learn how to make this, Ruben? Um, well, I used to go to some place in, um, in SAC. Yeah. Um, all the time for work. I used to go there all the time on my lunch break, and it was, like, so good. It was bomb? Fire. And then I was like, man, like, I want to learn how to make this now, you know? So yeah. I pretty much just started, like, learning, and when I would, like, open up the sandwich, like, the ingredients are there. It's pretty simple, you know? Yeah. Like, simple ingredients. So then I'm like, I want to make some for the whole family now. So then that's when I just bought, I bought all the ingredients and started making it. So do you be cooking at home? Yeah, I cook at home. You know, I try to, I try to uh, like contribute as much as I can. You, you know? and Karen take turns cooking. Uh, yeah. I mean, for the most part, um, you know, she she does she handles like a large portion of like cooking and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but sometimes like I'll try to like help out, have her take a break, and I'll cook for. Them. I feel like it's good for a man to know how to cook, right? Oh, for sure. I feel like that's important. You know, like you gotta learn how to cook. You know, because you don't want to be depending on nobody. I just feel like. I get it because there's always like things like oh but you know he works and I stay at home or like you know or I take the trash out but besides the point I feel like you should know how to cook whether you're a man or a woman mm -hmm. because it's part of surviving you know oh yeah yeah like it's yeah. part of survival like cooking mm -hmm. and I think that like I do a lot of like stuff like I'll wash the dishes you know yeah and I feel like like you said like in the culture a lot of guys or whatever they'll think oh no girls only do that yeah you know but no I still do all that. I still do all that stuff like I'll like throw it out mop if I have to you know I'll try to I'll just try to yeah. help out as much it's as I can help out. and especially because yeah. both of you guys like have your hustle you know mm hmm oh for sure so so it's not like one is doing more work than that. Yeah, yeah. She, she, like I said, she does most of the cooking, but like I'll do, it. I'll have her take a break right here. Yeah. Let me cook tonight. You know, she, she cooks pretty good too, though. But yeah, so for those of you guys who don't know, me and Ruben, well, so Ruben is kind of like my little brother, I feel like. Instead of my nephew, I see him more like a little brother because me and him got raised together. Ruben, when he was little, um, he was really attached to my mom, so. He came to live with me and my mom when we were little. Mm -hmm. In Fresno. Yeah, in Fresno. And then eventually, I think when, once you were like a teenager, you went with your mom, huh? I think I was like, mm, I want to say like 13. That's yeah. When I moved you were like a teenager. Sacramento. It was definitely a new, new like environment, you yeah. know, transitioning from Fresno to Sac. You know, I liked it though. I like I like the change. I did miss Fresno though. Literally right after I was kind of regretting yeah. it. Like, oh, I miss Fresno. Honestly, miss yeah, you miss you kind of miss your little hometown. Yeah. But now I'm happy. Now I feel like now I'm happy like wherever I go I can like like um, adjust. You know? I think once you leave your hometown, it's easy to live anywhere. Mm-hmm. Cause you're exactly. like, fuck it, I already did it. Yeah, I already did it and like it's easy to adjust, you know, like... Yeah, and you guys, fun fact. Well, it's actually not fun fact, but it's kind of funny now. I saved Ruben's life when he was little. So, Ruben, do you remember that one time you were eating that candy? Yeah. So, when we were little, we would, like, stay eating Mexican candy. And I was babysitting him and the twins, which I don't even know why I was babysitting because I was, like, a kid myself. I want to say I was, like, 11. I, yeah, I was about 11 or so. Ruben, you were probably like, how old do you think you were? I think I was like, I don't know, like six or something maybe. Yeah, you're probably like six. And Ruben was eating a freaking Mexican candy. And I don't know if you guys have ever, like, if you eat Mexican candy, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. It's like these little, like, balls. And they have chile in the middle. They have chile in the middle. So like the outside is kind of like hard candy. And then once you get to the inside, it's like chile. And they have them like in mango flavor mm. or like watermelon flavor. Flavor. So basically, I don't know what the hell he was thinking, but he put the whole, like, were, did you, were you sucking on it and accidentally like swallowed it? Yeah, I put the whole thing in my mouth and I ended up swallowing it. Yeah, you guys, so we were, I remember, like, it, I remember, like, it was yesterday. I was dying. It was me and the twins and him, and we are like, little watchmen in the kitchen, and all of a sudden, he starts choking on me. 
And dude, he scared me, you guys. Like, I legit thought we were gonna lose him because he started turning blue. And like, I could tell he couldn't breathe. Like, so basically, like, the ball was like covering his airway. He couldn't breathe. Like, he was trying to throw it up, but he couldn't. Mm -hmm. You guys, I don't even know CPR, but just from watching movies and stuff, like, so I went like in back of Ruben, you guys, and I went like this, and I was like, huh, like I was like, you know how like in the movies they go in back of you and they didn't start going like that to you? Like, dude, I like I I don't know. I was just doing what the movies did, and you guys tell me why that shit worked. I like I threw it up like a slew. You guys legit how they do it in the movies, like I was doing that to him. And it just flew out. Like it flew out his mouth. That was scary. That was scary. But I was like, after like he survived and everyone calmed down, I was like, ah oh, shit, like I know how to do CPR. And you know, you know what, Piggy? I feel like you were always a responsible babysitter like that. Like you were always there taking care of us. Yeah. Not like all my childhood memories is like you babysitting us. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I was like. I started babysitting you guys, like, yeah, like, very young. But you know when you grow up with single moms, you know, the oldest one is basically in charge. Yeah. <laughs> Which, I don't even know why you would leave me in charge, but I didn't burn the house down, so that's what counts. Yeah, I feel like you're, you've always been very responsible. Thanks, so. man. I tried. Yeah. And then when they cook, they're like stressed, it like melts. You know? Okay, I get it. I see the vision. I see you the see vision. <laughs> All right, chef, what's the next step? So now we're gonna start cooking our veggies. We got green pepper, red pepper, and some onions. Um, if you like mushrooms on it, you can also add mushrooms. But these are usually the the veggies that you're gonna put on it. All right. So I'm not a big fan of mushrooms. You don't have. To, you don't have. To, I know a lot of people don't like it. Oh. So whenever I cook it, I'll just cook make them on the side, yeah. yeah. And then like if, if whoever likes it could just put it on there, you know. But for the most part, this will all be combined with this together. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start chopping it up. Yeah. So we want to chop it up and um, let me see. We want to cut it. I don't know how. To, how do you cut these? Honestly, I just I. I don't know. There's no professional way no. I do it. I'm pretty sure there's a professional way, but I feel all like worried about cutting it the wrong way because I know that you, you know, you're like, like you don't want to be a lazy chopper. Yeah, I don't want to be a lazy chopper. There you go. So, all right. So I think I'm gonna just start cutting it from like right here, I guess. Okay. And just kind of go like that. I think that's how you cut it. Those are a little tricky, huh? To yeah. chop up. I'm gonna go like that. Okay. okay. That's pretty dope. Yeah, huh? that's pretty clean. So. All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna we just want to get it like that, so maybe like half this size, like that. Okay, yeah. You know, I like that size. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're gonna do that to pretty much all of them. The onions too. Onions are gonna look about that, and then um, I'll show you guys the next step mm. when we put it in because we're gonna cure, we're gonna um, cook it where it's like where. It's like caramelizes, you know? Mm, like okay. the thing. I see and the vision. Yeah, so it's, it's good. It's all right, all right, all right. Fire. All right, guys, so this is how you want to chop up your onion. So today we are going to be lazy choppers on the onion just because we're going to caramelize this. So we don't want them super thin because they will burn and get crunchy. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that. So you kind of want to have them um, a little, little thick. So let me show you guys. This is the bell pepper we cut. We're pretty much... We're pretty much ready to go. All right, we're moving we, fast here. We have to make our our um, our sauce okay. for the for the cheese steak, Season it, and we're gonna start cooking. All right, sounds good. Wow, you guys, look at how organized my nephew is. He's so organized when it comes to cooking. You gotta clean as you go. I feel like that's the easiest way because as soon as you're done eating and enjoying your food, you're not gonna want to clean. I feel like it. So I Damn. Clean. Okay, you're trained very well. I always clean as I go. So right now we're gonna make our uh, our like it's like a spread. It goes really good. I feel like with the with the Philly cheesesteak sandwich. All right. So let me see. So what you're gonna need is mayo, ketchup, some of that W sauce, a little bit of sugar, and some seasoning. So let's start off with the mayo. Okay. A little bit of mayo to it. Need a lot of mayo. Add a little bit of 
some of that W sauce. I don't know how to say it, so I just say W sauce. I don't even know if I'm saying it. Worcestershire sauce. So, just about a tablespoon. That's like a tablespoon, huh? Mm, we're guesstimating. <laughs> tablespoon of garlic. And then obviously, like, like we'll taste it and if we'll see if we had too, we added too much of something, we'll just... Just add as you go, huh? Yeah, add as you go. Tablespoon of some minced garlic. Think about that much. Like, I, I feel like I enjoy garlic. Like, I can't eat garlic on anything. I feel Honestly, like. yeah, garlic gives the food so much flavor. Yeah. There's some ketchup. Oh, yay, much. I need a little more. Okay. A little bit of sugar. Oh, I've seen people add sugar on their sauces before. Yeah, and it kind of helps balance everything. So, let me grab another spoon. Okay. I just learned how to make Thousand Island sauce, and I've seen some people add sugar in it. Yeah, sugar. I'm telling you, it's. You would never think, but it, it actually like balances balances it pretty good. Just a little bit, not getting much. Okay. Yeah, a little more. Oh, okay. Okay, that much. Okay. Now, hit it with a little bit of that Lori's. You know, this is this is it. This is what we love. Our family fave. Mm-hmm. Lori's needs to sponsor me already. I know. We use them so much. Yeah. Right? Tony, so, all right, then we're gonna give it a little cool start. Did we add all the ingredients? Yeah. Okay. Give it a little stir. <clears throat> Hopefully we didn't add too much of the IW sauce, but it's looking pretty good. This is our spread. This is what we're gonna use to make our, um, you know, put it on the sandwiches. You put, you can put it or you don't have to, you, can, you know, but uh, I like adding a little bit to it. I feel like it gives it that extra kick. Okay. There you go. Give it a good mix. Okay. We're very dedicated to cleaning. Yeah, is it, I feel like I have to have a clean work area. Sometimes I get a little lazy, but for the most part, I'm always trying to clean up as I. Do we need to add anything more, or you got the formula right? Um, nah, I feel like I gotta add a little okay. more seasoning. I feel like I taste the mayo a lot. Okay, you know what that helps? Uh, what helps put a little more ketchup in it? Ketchup? Yeah, when I made Thousand right. Islands, I put too much mayo and then I added more ketchup and it took away the... Okay guys, so me and... Excuse my hair guys, you guys know my hair is always crazy when we're cooking. So, me and Ruben worked on the recipe for the sauce again. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, he added a little too much Worcester sauce. I don't yeah. know if I'm saying it right, but you guys know what I'm talking about. So, if you guys are going to make the sauce, um, try not to put as much. Just put like a little splash. Um, I ended up adding more mayo in it um, to kind of um, even it out. So I ended up evening it. Yeah. I evened it out, so now it tastes how it's supposed to taste. She fixed it. Last yeah. time you know she's an amazing cook and she can freaking fix oh, it. Thanks. You know, so oh, you my. fixed it. And I was like worried. I'm like, oh my god, I messed up the sauce. Was... Yeah, just be careful with the Worcester sauce, guys. So the taste is very like a vinegar. So mm -hmm. you only want to use a little splash, okay? Yeah. All right, so now we're on to the next. Oh, let me show you guys. So this is what our sauce looks like. And we added pepper. So what we're gonna use to season the meat is lawyers. Okay. Oh, we're gonna put some lawyers in there. And then we're gonna put some onion powder. Put some onion powder in there, like so. And you guys, the salt is always to your liking. Mm-hmm, okay. I should probably grab something, huh? Yeah. We're just mixing up the meat over here, getting the seasoning, salt, and onion powder even. Mm hmm And after this, we are ready to cook. All right. You need this. If you're gonna make Philly cheesesteaks, this is very important. That is a must. Yes. Yeah, and you guys will see why. Okay. All right, guys, so here we have Ruben. Um, this is where he's gonna cook. This is our griddle, but you can also use the stove for this. I made them before in the stove, and they still come out fire. But we're gonna use this. We're gonna take advantage of this. So okay. What we're gonna do is Add a little bit of oil. I'm using olive oil. Okay. So, so. Got a little onions right little there. Onions. And like I said, we do want to get it like to where they caramelize. So now you're adding olive oil to the top? Yeah, just on top. Okay. And I have it on low heat too. So. Oh yeah, make sure you guys have it on low heat, you guys. So basically we're going to cook these until they caramelize. Yeah. All right, guys. So now we're going to throw in the bell peppers. Mm -hmm. I don't know if this is too much. Mm. 
Yeah, I think well, that's good. Cool. Damn, man, this is fucking delicious. Okay. You guys, I'm babysitting over here, so look, I got my setup right here. Kid entertained while me and Ruben work. All right, so this is how the onions are going, you guys. As you can see, they're starting to caramelize a little bit. Mm -hmm. And then we're still working on the bell peppers. Yeah. The bell peppers are the ones that take a little longer to cook. And I'm adding a little bit of water, and that's helping it okay. caramelize. I didn't know that trick. All right, guys, so our onions are caramelized now. We're gonna go ahead and take them out. So I just put them to the side for now, you know, so they stay warm, because then okay. I'm, I'm gonna mix everything together after this. Ooh, meal. okay. So, so now we're throwing in the meat. Yeah, now we're throwing in the meat. And guys, let me tell you, this smells amazing. Yes, it already smells so good. Yes, yeah, like, I feel like this is probably the best Philly cheesesteak sandwich I have ever made. Ooh, okay. So I'm loving it. I feel like I've only tried the Philly cheesesteaks from Charlie's and I, be, I feel like that's probably bootleg. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, people who had real ones are like, oh, hell no. Yeah. Like, you know how Mexicans feel about Taco Bell? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like people who have really tried them, but I can't wait to try them homemade. Yeah, these are fire. Trust me, you're going to love it. I put a little bit of oil. I should have probably put the oil in before because you're starting to get stuck. Yeah. But it's okay. I just stacked it on top. Okay. This is how the meat's going. Oh my god, it smells so amazing already. Mm -hmm. Alright guys, so the meat is now done. Okay, what's the next step? Next step, and we're gonna mix it all together. Alright. And they call it the chopped cheese because they have this little chopper that you use and you just start chopping the meat, you know, to like get it very thin. We ended up finding the chopper, guys. Yeah. So I'm just trying to get it as... So we... We ended up chopping it up, so now this is how it looks. We want it to look like this. So then we're gonna just mix it all together now. Oh my god, you guys, it smells so bomb. All right guys, so now we're gonna start uh, warming up the bread. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab your bread, slap a little bit of mayo. Okay. And then... And he already added a little bit of oil on here, guys. Yeah, that way it doesn't get stuck. So make sure if you guys are using a pan, add a little bit of oil. Because mm, then the bread gets stuck and then it starts ripping. You can also use butter, right? Yeah, butter. Butter tastes good, too. She ran out of butter. Mm -hmm. There's a shortage on butter, did you know? No, that's crazy. How the... Well, at the stores that I've gone to, there's butter, but I've seen that there's a shortage other, other places. So we just go like that. Bam. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start preparing the the sandwich because this is gonna we want the bread we don't want the bread hard we want it soft. Okay. You know, grab some cheese. We yeah, got here. some uh, smoked flavored pro provolone. Fire. You can use any cheese that you guys like, but I like this. Um, a lot of times they use the yellow cheese. Uh -huh. um, it's a cheese that comes in a can. It's called Whiz. That's good too if you guys like it like that. Um, I feel like that's the original like Philly cheesesteak. If yeah. you want it like like original like that, that's what they put. They put the Wiz cheese on it. But today we're putting this. So then we're gonna start slapping the cheese on top, like so. Oh my god, it smells so bomb. Mm -hmm, it smells really good. And then uh, I'm gonna let it out, and then I'm gonna mix it. So if you guys have made tortas, you kind of want it like a little toasty, like you know you would make your torta bread. Um, but yeah, this this how you want it, a little toasted mm -hmm. like that. A little toasted. All right, guys, this is nice and melted now. So what's the next step? So we're just gonna stir it, mix. I mean, Ooh, mix it in. Ooh, nice and cheesy, girl. Mm, just like so. Mm, I like you. I like it a lot. <laughs> Man, this looks so good. I can't wait to eat. Mm, this smells so bomb. That looks good, huh? Yeah. So we separated our little meat in batches. So mm -hmm. this is for one bread, this is for another bread, and that's for mm -hmm. another bread. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the add the cheese on top. Oh, we're gonna add more cheese. Yeah, more okay. Cheese. Very cheesy. I it's like good, it. Though. Like that. Like that. I'm gonna add two slices on this one because it's something you know cheese. Bang. And now we're gonna melt that. Mm -hmm. All right, so then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slap it on top. And see, this is why I said this is important. Move it like that. And bam. 
o slap it on top grab this like that okay Philly cheesesteak sandwiches Bye. I'll that. all right you guys look at how amazing that looks all right so let's start putting them on the plate mm -hmm. and remember we still need our sauce so if oh you we gotta add that to add the sauce you can if not you can enjoy it like this all right let's slap them on the plate a little bit of french fries that we made Oh yeah, we made french fries guys, but not homemade. We were being a little lazy with that, yeah, but yeah. We put them in the oven though, so that's kind of mm -hmm. like, you know? Okay, so here goes Ruben's little setup. Mm -hmm. Okay, so show us how you prep. All right guys, so pretty much, I'm just, um, the sandwich is already made. Oh, we have our little fries. oven baked fries. Mm -hmm. They're good, seasoned to perfection. Mm -hmm. And this is optional. If you want the sauce, you can you can put some. Yeah, on. you guys don't have to make the sauce if you don't want no. to. But add a little bit of the sauce, just a little bit. You don't want to put too much. Okay. Okay, and then some jalapenos. Oh, I love spicy. Mm -hmm. Just like that. I like a lot of jalapenos. And there you go, guys. Oh, let's guys see. Think? All right, guys. So this is my plate, and this is Ruben's. Oh my God, it looks so fire. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's take it on down. Here we have Karen already set up with Evie. I'm babysitting Evie here, so. Hey, what are you enjoying, Evs? Fries? He's having fries. All right, guys. You guys know what time it is. This is from my freaks. All right, guys. We are doing the famous fetish pie. All right. So let's see, Ruben. Let's, let's see. see what you're all about. Oh my here god. Is. Hopefully, you guys enjoy it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's good. Wow. You guys did a good job. You like it? Fucking uh -huh. fire, you guys. Bitter cheese steak sandwiches. Fucking fire. It has a lot of flavor. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what we should do next time? Instead of adding oil, we should add butter to the um. Uh, mm-hmm. The brown. Mm -hmm. I recommend you guys add butter to this. Oh my god, it'll be 20 times better. But. Mm. And the sauce makes it so much better. Like, it gives mm -hmm. it more flavor. Mm -hmm. That's good. I love it. Alright, you guys. And that is it for today's video. I hope you guys liked our little collab. It was so good, guys. 10 out of 10. I will consume again. Let me know if you guys want me to do more videos with my nephew. Also, let me know if you guys want me to do a collab with another one of the family members. So, you guys let me know who you guys want me to do next. Mwah. It was good. <laughs> so, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, you guys, I will put Ruben's info in the description box if you guys want to watch his channel or follow him on IG. If you guys make this recipe, don't forget to tag both of us and we will repost you. Mm -hmm. Let me know if you guys make your Philly sandwiches a little different. Maybe you guys add something. Um, or if you guys have any recommendations. You guys know I love hearing your guys' recommendations. So, thank you, Ruben, for coming out on my video. But yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for watching Mo Money's channel. Peace.